to a subject we will all be familiar with now, cold callers, but they will soon be forced to display their telephone numbers. If companies withhold their identities and they persistently break the rules, then they can expect to face fines from the Information Commissioner's office. Well, Steve Smith is founder and director of True Call uh, and joins us now. First of all, Steve, I've just got to ask you, is this legislation necessary? And the reason I ask is, um, like many other people, I used to get these PPI calls all the time, it's driving crazy. Somebody said to me, if you register for the telephone preference service, they'll stop. I did it, I gave it a chance, and I've not had one for months. So there are already ways to stop these cold calls. Well, that's terrific. You've had a great experience. The telephone preference service is very good, and anybody who's not already registered, I'd encourage them to do it. It's free, it's very easy to register. The analysis and the statistics shows that it blocks about a third of the nuisance calls. So whilst it's been very good for you, for a lot of other people, they will say it hasn't made a difference. Now you've got this box, and, and this box, just explain to us what it does and how it works. Yeah, we have a, a product we've developed called TrueCall. Um, about 750,000 homes in the UK are protected by our technology, and we're blocking about a quarter of a billion nuisance calls a year. Are you blocking withheld numbers or are you blocking um, numbers that you don't like? No, we, there are a lot of blockers are available that block on the basis of numbers you don't want to hear from. The problem is there are thousands of those and they keep changing their numbers. We work in a different way. We operate on the basis of the phone numbers that you do want to hear from, your friends and family members. There's a few dozen of those, you know who they are and they don't change their, name, uh, their numbers all the time. When they call, their call gets straight through. But anyone else who calls is intercepted and gets a message. Hi, you're through to Steve. We don't accept telemarketing calls, but if you're a friend or family member, please say your name after the tone, then press hash. Now the silent calls, the recorded message calls can't get through. Um, and the telemarketers know that you're not going to accept their call if they announce themselves, and so they go away. And we're blocking typically 95% of nuisance calls that way. But, but if, I was, if I was a savvy telemarketer and I wanted to get around these rules, all I would do is I would look at this legislation and think, right, I'm going to call this number and I'm going to say, it's still calling. I'm not going to say where I'm from until so-and-so picks up the phone and then I'll get launched into my Sure, phone. and they could do that. But if they get through and you then, you do press the button, you say, Phil, and you get through to me and then you start trying to sell me your double glazing. Well, actually, I, I've, you've gone against my wishes, my express wishes. I'm very, very unlikely to buy from you. So actually, it's in your best interest just to move on. Now, your colleague, Stephen Dixon, has had one of our units for a while and he's been tweeting this morning about how much he loves it. Yeah, but I mean, there will be other people that don't share that enthusiasm, especially because of the extra levels of, uh, of well, hassle you have to put through. What if Great Auntie Mabel calls? You've not heard from Great Auntie Mabel for three years. <laughs> yeah. She gives you a call and she's greeted with this voice that sounds like an automatic... You know, people will be put off by these kinds of things. It's a difficult problem. The nuisance call problem is a very difficult problem. There's no silver bullet that's going to solve it easily. What we've done is we've come up with a solution that is very, very effective. The sort of situation you're talking about can happen, but actually in practice happens very rarely. The important move, though, is to move it away from a device in your household into the telecoms network. So that actually it becomes part of the service that the telecoms network is giving you. Would you now, sorry, 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 mm. very briefly, because we've got to move on in a second. The, um, the, the official line is that this will stop these, these un, uh, unwanted calls. But rogue companies will always find a way around because rogue companies, by their very definition, are rogue. They don't obey the rules. Yes, the new government changes that have come out today are very welcome that people, call centres will have to put their number through. And yes, there will be rogues who ignore that. And that's why I saw a multi-approach to solving this with devices, with regulation, with the telephone preference service is the way to go ahead. All right, Steve, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it.